Lord. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you, my Lord. We thank you, my King. We thank you, Abba. We thank you, Lord. We are grateful. Holy Spirit, come into this place. Holy Spirit, come into this place. Holy Spirit, come into this place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. You are worthy. You are worthy to be praised. You are holy. You are holy, my God. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me know if you can hear me. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Welcome into this place. I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm going to be kind of testing everything out. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Godfire Temple. I am here on the behalf of Pastor Kanani. I pray that you are blessed and highly favored in the mighty name of Jesus. If you guys don't know, I am Selena Jackson, and I will be the minister for this evening. Let us do praise and worship. Uh, Gift Lizzie, I will, at the end of this sermon today, I will be taking any prayers, any requests for prayers, any questions, we will do that after the Lord's word because the Lord's word is powerful and it's something that we all need to hear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome. On behalf of Pastor Kanani Stevens, I am Selena Jackson once again. I see that people are still coming into the platform today. This will be Sunday service. I am so honored to be here again. Um, I pray for you all. I have been praying for you. I also went back on to the last sermon we did and I took some prayer requests. I responded back to as many as I could respond back to. And I pray that you have seen a change in your circumstances since the last time we met in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so good. God is so worthy to be praised. He loved us so much that he said, I don't want to see my children perish. I don't want to keep seeing them happen to sacrifice animals. I don't want them to keep coming to the synagogues and sacrificing animals. It has to be a different way that we can do this. So he sent his only begotten son to die for our sins. Do you know how powerful that is? How loving that is? How humble that is? for our almighty God to sacrifice his only begotten son. I just want that to sink in for a second before we start our word today. Let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, or Abba, my Lord, my King, Eldonai, Elohim, my Lord, you are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, I am grateful. We are grateful for just you sending your only begotten son to die for our sins in the mighty name of Jesus. My father, I ask that you give me the power to deliver the word to your people today, my God, to my brothers and my sisters in Christ, my Lord. Open their spiritual ears and open their spiritual eyes, my Lord, that they will hear the message and see what you have in store for them on this day. Cover this live, cover this platform with love, patience, happiness, abundance, prosperity, spiritual growth, compassion, empathy, and for people to be delivered, to be renewed, to be washed, and to be cleansed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I will lift my eyes to the hills. No. My help is coming from you. Your peace you give to me in time. Oh. glory to God. Amen. We love you, God. We honor you. We give you the worship. We give you the praise. You are our father. You are our leader. You are our pastor. You are our shepherd. My father, my Lord, open the ears of your people so they can hear what you have to say. Welcome, my guys. Welcome, my queens. Welcome, my brothers and my sisters of Christ. Today, God has a word for all of us. 
Don't be self-righteous. Don't be self-righteous. Don't think that without Jesus, you could do this. Don't think without Jesus dying on the cross, you could do this because you could not. This is bigger. This is bigger. I need you to put in the chat, this is bigger. Are you desperate for God? Are you desperate for God? Are you in desperation for God? God will take your pain and the things that you love to make you desperate for him. If you're greedy for money, if you love the things of this world, he will take it all. He will take it all from you. He will give you the pain, the storms, the rejections, the bitterness, all of that. So you can seek first ye the kingdom. Let's look up desperate. Desperate is a feeling, showing or involving a hopelessness sense that a situation is so bad as to be impossible to deal with. Are you desperate for God? I mean, are you truly desperate? Because God is telling me a lot of you are not believing. Pastor Kanani, gets on here throughout the week and he prays with you and he asks you to close your eyes and to ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. And when he does that, and you're, and, and sometimes, you know, I watch the live and, and some of the people that come on the live, they say, I don't see anything. I'm not seeing anything. I don't see anything. Is that because you're not believing? Is that because you don't have belief in your heart that Jesus, our personal savior, died for our sins? Because to be able to see, you have to have faith. To be able to see, you have to have faith. To be able to hear, you have to be, be quiet. How? How? To be able to see, you have to believe. Today we're gonna to look at first, Let's look at Matthew 6, chapter 6, verse 33. And I will wait for you to get to the word. That is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Because today at the end of the sermon, I want you to know that you believe and that you're desperate for God. I don't want you to leave this platform without being desperate for God, without having faith and hope and belief in him and his word and his water in his manner. Yes, 
Let us read Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. But seek first his kingdom. Hallelujah. And his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Righteousness is obedience to God. Are you desperate for God? Are you desperate and not of the things of this world? Because when you're desperate for him, when you're truly desperate for him, then all, all things will be added unto you. All things will be added unto you. And you won't have to question. And you won't have to ask why. Because your, your belief will be there. And your faith will be there. But number one, your trust in him will be there. Not trust in man. I see so many people that get on these platforms. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I will get with, as I said before, I'm so sorry. I will pray and I will take prayer requests at the end of the sermon. Just hang in there with me. I got you. I love you. I'm your sister. I will not leave without praying for you. If you want to be desperate for God, if you truly want to be desperate, because I see a lot of people that put their hope in man. You know, I go, I have a lot of pastor friends. You know, Pastor Kanani is one. And I have several other friends that are in ministry. And the first thing everyone wants is lay your hands on me, man of God. Touch me, man of God. Touch me, woman of God. Touch me, please touch me. Touch me, touch me. Touch me. Touch me, woman of God. Touch me, man of God. Are we idolizing man? That's not why God sent leaders. That's not why he sent us. He sent us to help you with your spiritual path because he trusts us to help you with your spiritual path. Sometimes it gets so heavy on our hearts that we turn to man instead of following the word of God. So God has to send his people to, he has to descend so we can ascend the message to you. Hallelujah. Are you desperate for God? I need you guys to share the live because before I even get deep into this, I feel like it's some people that are missing. I feel like the chat isn't where God wants it to be. Before I get deep into this message, before I get powerful, into this message you have to share this live and you have to put in the chat I am desperate for God you have to share this live you have to share this live because it's people that are missing I don't want anyone to miss this word today it is definitely a must that you hear this word today amen it is a brother, it is a sister, it is a cousin, it is somebody missing 
this word. So I need you to share the live on the behalf of God Fire Temple and Pastor Kanani Stephen, your leader, your pastor. I need you to share the live. Share it to two people, share it to four people. We have to make sure that everybody gets desperate for God because we want to see breakthroughs and we want to see miracles and we want to see blessings because I'm going to get into all of that. I'm going to get into all of that. I'm not going to keep you long today. I know last time we were on for quite a while, but it's whatever God wants. This is God's platform and he gave the entrusted to give it to Pastor Kanani so he can be your shepherd. But I really need everyone to share this live because this is the good news. This is the good news because I believe today there's going to be some breakthroughs. I believe today there's going to be some breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. I believe today someone is going to get some blessings pouring out of heaven because they're going to be on fire for God. They're going to be desperate for God. I didn't say self-righteous because we have to watch that. We have to watch us being self-righteous because if we're self-righteous, then someone else isn't getting saved because we're supposed to be that image in the likeness of God. And we have to show people so that way they can want to come to Christ so we can draw them near to Christ, not being judgmental. That was what what the Pharisees did.
second. Is there sound now? Is there sound? 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 Okay, is there sound? Yes? Okay. That's nothing but the devil. The devil don't want this word to get out because guess what? Somebody's getting delivered today. Somebody's coming out of poverty today. Somebody's coming out of a overthinking mind. Somebody's coming out of hardship today in the mighty name of Jesus. Because... Okay. Can you hear me again? Okay. In the book of Joel, Joel teaches us about the power of the combined prayers and fasting of God's people during a time of great difficulty in Israel's history. Joel assured the people that through repentance, they would, they would again receive the blessings of God. The day of the Lord, a day of God's wrath and judgment. We're going to read chapter one in Joel, verse 14. We're going to read chapter 1, verse 14 in the book of Joel. That's Joel. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Joel called all the elders, all the people in, in the, from the church, into the church, into the church, so they could pray and fast because God was angry from all the disobedience and rebellion. And Joel knew that they, had, they were desperate. They were desperate for God because they knew that God was angry and he was getting ready to do some things. Is God angry? Because we're not desperate for him? Is that why we're getting all of these attacks? Because we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing? For his will. Our lives are not our own. To him, we belong to him. And we have to understand that. And I think once we understand that this, this life is not our own, then we will do better. You cannot be of the world and want to be desperate for God. It just, and, and I know some people get a little disturbed when you say, well, you shouldn't be of the world and you shouldn't be, you know, doing things that you shouldn't do. And then they'll say, well, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Okay. Yes. But you're supposed to be sinning less. You're supposed to be repenting from everything that you have done before you knew Christ and turning away from that. Of course, we're going to sin to the day we die. Of course. Jesus 
was the only one that was perfect. But that doesn't mean that you still have to drink alcohol. That doesn't mean that you still have to fornicate. That doesn't mean that you still have to be an adulterer. That doesn't mean that you still have to be greedy. That doesn't mean that you still have to have, have a wife and still sleep on the side. That doesn't mean that that's what you have to do because you don't want to be overly righteous. That, that means that you need to repent because maybe you had blindfolders on and you didn't have the eyes of God. You didn't have the spiritual eyes. You didn't have the spiritual eyes. You didn't have the awakening. But after you're awakened, and you have the knowledge. That's why God said we will perish for the lack of knowledge. That's why God said we will perish for the lack of knowledge. Because what you don't know, you cannot do. If you don't know how to repent and turn from your wicked ways and be desperate for God, then how can you do it? How can you know what am I doing is right or wrong if you don't have the knowledge? It's just like a child. When we have our children, we have to parent them. And the definition of parenting is teacher. You have to teach them. They don't know that taking um, something out your pocketbook is stealing. They don't know going in the refrigerator and just eating whatever they want all day is gluttony. They don't know when they're playing outside with, with other children, yelling and snatching the ball is, is, is not being kind. These are the things we have to teach them. If you want to be taught, need to get into the water and the bread of God. You have to get into the living word. You have to be desperate for God. That means seeking him, trusting him, repenting, honoring him. And when you honor him, you will submit to him. God knew that we would sin. He knew it because Adam and Eve already set that platform for us. He told us at the beginning in Genesis that this was going to occur. We already knew when they said, God said, how do you know that you're naked? Did you eat from the tree? How do you know? Being desperate for God is repenting, turning away from your wicked ways. If you have a sister or brother, I'm just going to use this as an example. You might get around family sometimes and you and a certain family member don't get along. Y'all quarrel all the time and you repent, you say, God, I am so sorry for quarreling with this brother or this sister or this family member. But the next time you go around a family member, that family member keeps quarreling. But you know what you do? You turn your cheek and you let them keep being the quarrelsome person. And you change your wicked ways. Let them be who they are. Because if they don't have no one to quarrel with, they'll stop. They won't quarrel by themselves. Trust me. Trust me. Be desperate for God. Be desperate for God. Change. You always, people always say, I want a financial blessing. And this is something that I used to pray for all the time. And God was giving me the blessing. He was giving me the finances. 
But I was letting it fly out the window like an evil. When you ask for a financial blessing, when God gives you extra, ask him to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to go along with the financial blessing. Because you want to be able to have the correct stewardship over your finances. You want to be able, you cannot drink it away. You cannot keep buying alcohol thinking that that is going to help you with your financial problems. I always tell people, put even if you put up $2, you're putting up something. Put up $2, put up a dollar. If you put up $2 or $3 every time, or you ask a, couple, a group of people to get together and you guys put, we used to do this thing at, at our job. It was called. We would do this thing at our job and it was called a pool. And we would put in everybody would put because we were kind of like you know struggling a little bit everybody on the job struggling living paycheck to paycheck and we would put everybody would put like maybe fifty dollars in there and keep putting it in there it was about maybe 50 people we had in this pool and we had a responsible person that we knew that would not take from the pool and we would all put in this pool and every person would get the pot once some, once everybody put in. Then one, then the next person we'll put in the next one, and the next person would get the pool, and then the next person would get it. Sometimes you have to ask God to God to give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because I think that we're so used to just begging and putting our hands out, you know, and asking and asking and asking when God has to give you that idea. You know, I think a pool is a great idea when you're struggling and you need a financial blessing. Everybody puts in $5. You put in $5. Put in five dollars. You put in five dollars. I put in five dollars. If twenty people was putting in five dollars, there you go. That's a hundred dollars. Then that person gets that hundred dollars, and that can help out with buying rice and food, and you know, it's the little things. Somebody's going to be delivered today because we're all clapping and happy. When we're talking about God's blessings, but when we want when we want to hear what we want to hear, but when God is talking to you, you don't want to hear it. You want to hear, oh, you're going to get this big blessing and it's pouring out on you. But to re receive the blessing, to receive the gift that God has for you, you have to give him something. Pour into God the same way he want, you want him to pour into you. The same way you want God to pour into you, you need to pour into him. Because it's called reciprocation. And God is a God of reciprocation. God wants you to give. Giving is a part of his word, his ministry. We have to give. We also have to receive. We also have to seek first ye the kingdom. We also have to be obedient. Come on, come on, come on. 
I really want everyone to grow from this platform. I pray that you grow from this platform. I pray that you grow from this word. I pray that you get what your heart desires if it's according to God's will. Because God is an awesome God and he loves you. And when you do what he needs you to do, he will give you the desires. He will bless you with that visa, but he has to trust you first. Because how, you, how do you know that if God give you this money or if God give you this visa that you won't leave him? He has to touch your spirit. I need you to put in the chat, I'm going to be desperate for God. I could care if it was two people in this chat. I could care if it was one person. I just want someone to hear this word because someone truly wants to know why God operates the way he operates why are they not getting this financial pour down and they're like god i'm praying i'm fasting but did you repent from when you took your brother's bike did you repent for when you was angry with your neighbor did you repent when you were you said some, you cursed your sister. Did you repent and turn from your wicked way? Because I, you know, I just told, asked my sister today, and I didn't want to quarrel with her, but we used to go to the same church. And now I go to a Nigerian church, but before I used to go to the same church. And it's all nice. And it's big, it's a big congregation. They have about 30 ministers. They have the music. They have the singers. They have the drums. And it's all good. But I wasn't being spiritually fed there. I wasn't getting growth there. I wasn't elevating there. I wasn't becoming the new. Because it, it was about money and it's an organization. And that, that's why we get lost. And every, everybody wants to see the pastor. Why do you want to see the pastor? God is a spirit. He's all around you. He is the pastor. Hallelujah. Why do you want this man to keep laying hands on you? Why? Why? I'm not understanding that. We're not being spiritually fed because we're being unguided. There's so many pastors and leaders that are going to sacrifice sacrificial rituals. When you get a when you get time, go on YouTube and watch James Koala, Pastor James Koala's story. And Pastor Kanani knows him. Watch his story. He said he had a lot of pastors that came to him when he was in darkness and he was serving the devil that came for spiritual powers. And you got these demonic people placing their hands on your head, putting in you something that is of darkness. You have to watch who makes your food. You have to watch who is laying their hands on you. You have to ask God to show you what church is good for you. 
when it comes to leadership, when it comes to pastoring, when it comes to eating, when it comes to being fed the word of God, watch who is teaching you. Because it could be a devil. It can be a demon, but we so we want to rush into the church and and, and 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 ask for all these blessings when you're really being cursed. I didn't even get into it with my sister because she was like, "I said, do you think Pastor such and such is is really um um." preaching and helping you spiritually grow and she said oh yeah he helps me spiritually grow oh yeah he's the best uh-huh because you know what he said today don't trust every prophet yeah don't trust every prophet but has anybody came to you and told you what you need to work on my pastor in my church came to me and told me this is what you need to work on you need to work on pride you need to work on this you need to work on that and i added on to him i said i need to add i need to work on my jealousy i need to add i need to work on my on my ego i need to work on being uh, insecure i need to work on being uh you know and he was like oh you just yeah i'm gonna tell you what i need to work on but thank you because I never had anyone come to me and say that. That's a man of God that's watching with spiritual eyes. That's going to help you repent. And ever since I've been in that church, blessings. I mean, glory be to God. Blessings. I was still fornicating when I was going to my sister's church. I was still smoking marijuana when I was going to my sister's church. I was still drinking when I was going to my sister's church. I was going to church. I was hearing the word of God. Oh, yeah. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's okay organization it's a big church it's big but know your sheep know what they need that's why it's so many deacons and deaconesses and people in the church that that are still doing drugs it was so many testimonies that were coming up and they were like yeah i was going in this church for 10 years but i was still snorting cocaine I, oh yeah, I was still going to this church, but I was sleeping about I was sleeping with about four of your congregation members. That's why we gotta be desperate for God. And let, let me tell you something, because as a as a, a shepherd, as a minister of God, I have to be transparent with you. I have to take off my garment, my dirty garment, and give it to you so God can make me clean. Out of the four years I've been going to that Nigerian church, I was celibate until last year. Last year, I had one slip up. I did. I slipped up. But let me tell you something. Their prayers made me feel so guilty. And I don't want to do it again. I don't ever want to do it again. As much as I want to be with a partner, as much as I want to be with someone, as much as I don't want to be alone, I pray and I ask God to take that demonic Flash away from me. Men have to understand, yes, in the Bible it says a man needs sex and a woman needs affection. These are the things that it says in the Bible that we need. It's not a want, it's something that we need. 
But men, God also taught you discipline. And the more desperate you be for him, the more disciplined you will be. And you will have to know how to get rid of that flesh. Because if you're in the army or if you're serving some type of service and you have to go through a trial, you can't have sex. So just act like you're in the army and you're going through a trial. You just can't do it. It's hard. God didn't tell you that it was going to be easy. He said, pick up a cross and follow me. I'm not the best. I sometimes I yell, I scream, I, I scream at my son. Why did you do that? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? But every day I'm getting better. I'm fighting because I want to be with him when I leave this earth. I want to, I want to just say, God, you are holy. I want to look in his eyes. I just want to hold him. I just want to be in his presence. And I'm willing to sacrifice my flesh to be with him. Be desperate for God. Be, be on fire. Don't be lukewarm. Jesus said either cold or hot. You're going to be cold cold or you're going to be hot don't be lukewarm don't be lukewarm don't be lukewarm don't be lukewarm be on fire for god be on fire for god trust god love god worship god give him all of you give him all of you 100 percent And fight those demons that are inside you. It doesn't take a pastor to keep laying hands on you unless you out here doing witchcraft. You out here doing witchcraft, you're doing rituals, then you're causing that portal to be open for the demons to come in. Ask God to deliver you. Ask God to deliver you. Ask the pastor to pray with you. Don't just go to church on Saturdays or Sundays. Go to church on days of prayer night. Go to church when there is, um, what else do they have? Bible study. And if you're filled up and you're desperate for God, then you will know how to be prepared for the attacks. Just as well as you follow spiritual, the spiritual walk and awareness for God, you also need to be knowledgeable about the dark side the principalities, the darkness. You have to have education and knowledge about that as well. Because if you knew, I listened to a lot of witch stories, ex-witches, and when you listen, and warlocks, and when you listen to their story, the first thing they say is, we get to you when you're not in prayer. We come into your house. We, we come and tempt you when you're not in prayer. But when you're praying, we can't get to you. When you're praying, we can't even cast a spell on you. When you're praying, we can't even 
even come near your door. That's why God told us to pray without ceasing because he knew the witches was coming. The warlocks was coming. The demons were coming. When you get off of this platform today, I know a lot of people can't stay long. I understand about the current and I do understand about the electricity and I really appreciate you hanging in here with me today. Pastor Kanani Steven, I'm telling you guys, just hang in there with them. And it's going to be a positive impact on South Africa. It's going to be beneficial to South Africa and many other countries in the continent and the United States of America. Because God has the whole world in his hands. Hallelujah. The whole world. The whole world in his hands not just Africa United States too because social media has made it the awareness of darkness more exposed there was a time when I never seen a gay man in Africa but now when you go on TikTok they all got wigs on that's an abomination. And also, the African leader said, no, we're not doing no, no gay pride over here. But now, you go on TikTok, they on there like, like, yes, I will show you how to do my makeup. When Africa wasn't even exposed like that. Now we got all these different social media platforms and people thought, and it, it, it's, it's beneficial, yes. But if you're not desperate for God, you can lose your way. You can be exposed and you can lose your, your soul. It is ridiculous how many gay men we have and gay women and gay marriages. It's an abomination. And if you are in that lifestyle, you need to repent and turn away from your wicked ways. Use social media to benefit the gospel, to preach, to motivate, to even make money. Because you can make money on YouTube. You can make money on, on TikTok if you have a gift. But to even tap into your gifts, you have to be desperate. Because God can't even show you your gifts until you're desperate. You're in his, in, his, in, in his realm, in the spiritual realm. You know why Pastor Kanani can see angels? Because he's desperate for God. He's desperate. And, not, and when, when it comes to being desperate, he believes. That's why he sees. He believes. That's why he sees. Every time Jesus, not every time, but majority of the times that Jesus did a miracle, he said, your faith made you whole. Is it because you're not desperate for God that you're not elevating in your lifestyle? That you're not achieving? You're not processing? You're not progressing? Let's go to Psalm 69. I've really, you know what, it, it's so, it, it's, it's really, Psalm 69, 
sad that, you know, a lot of people know the word, but they don't apply it. I know people that know more scriptures than me, that know how, you know, there's a couple scriptures I know that I have in my mind. And I meditate on those little couple scriptures all the time. But I know people that know, that know this, like, no, no, the word, like, seriously, to the next power. One of me and, me and my friend, Sean, we go back and forth sometimes. And sometimes I have to minister to him. And I, it just gets to me when we don't apply the word. Because if we were applying the word, then a lot of us would be bigger. If some people I see on TikTok, on TikTok, they're, they're, they have these lions because on TikTok we sow seeds, people sow seeds. And, you know, it's this one lady from Africa. It's actually two people that really get big seeds and they show what they sow. They show what they sow back into the country. So this one lady, she gets two or three lions all the time. Every time I go on her platform, she's getting two or three lions. And it's worth $300 a lion. So that's $900 that she made. And I believe she's from Ghana. She might be from Ghana. And it's another guy that's on the platform. And he's from Ghana. And he does soak and worship for God. Hours of singing and praising God. And he gets lions. All of these lions. these lions so what are we doing wrong because they're on the platform and they're praying day and night on the platform of TikTok and he's singing hours and hours of God's music and they are blessed so don't tell me is if you're on this platform, you have a cell phone. The reason why you're not being beneficial and you're not being successful and you're not achieving is because you are not desperate for God. Because once you're desperate for God, you're supposed to have a job and you're supposed to have a work. And this is from Miles Monroe. He even said it. You're supposed to have a job, not two jobs, not supposed to have two jobs. You're supposed to have one job and you're supposed to have a work, a work in the kingdom. I don't care if you want to go give out food. I don't care if you want to buy a bag of rice and give it to, uh, put it in little baggies and give it to everybody. I don't know if you want to go join the church and maybe usher. I don't know if you want but you cannot just sow money and think that that's being desperate for God because that's not. God put a work in all of us. We have a unique gift in all of us. Some preach, some sing, some give, some love. Some people know how to be a mother to many because they don't have children of their own. Some people know how to bring down angry spirits. So that's why people come talk to them all the time. Some people know how to, to lead and some people know how to follow. Be desperate for our King. I'm not telling you what to do, but I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach the word of God. I'm going to get better in my spiritual walk with God. I'm going to have faith in him. Because 
because no matter how hurt I am at this moment, because I'm hurting, I'm preaching this word, but I have a heavy heart. And God is with me. But you did not know that. I'm letting you know because I'm being transparent today. I married a, a sinner, a, a, a really bad guy. I married a bad guy. And I had to depart from him because that marriage was not built on God's word. And it was not built from God. It wasn't his will. It never was his will. Because when I married that man, I wasn't in my faith walk the way I am today. I was going to that church. So I was infatuated. with the good, sweet talkings in my ear. And I was infatuated with the, with the whole idea of being married. And when I tell you it hurts when you were faithful and loving to someone and they betray you like Judas did Jesus. Like Laban, Laban did Jacob. Like Cain did Abel. But that is what put me where I am today of being desperate for God. because I love him and he's there for me and he will be there for you too. He will be there for you. I know sometimes it gets hard And I know sometimes it gets tough, but don't lean into your own understanding. Our own understanding is what gives us, gives, puts us in a vulnerable state of destruction. And because I didn't hear God when I went and got married to this man, I went through years and years of torment. Do I want love? Of course. Do I want somebody to play with my son? A, a father figure? Of course. Who doesn't? What woman does it? But you cannot stay with the devil. I kept having dreams. And my dreams were telling me that it wasn't right. My dreams kept showing me that he was not good. I was cheated on. I was verbally abused. I was manipulated. I was deceived. But because of my Obedience in God. 
I was delivered. Yes, Kimberly, we can go to um, Psalm 69. When God wants you to hear a testimony, you ought to listen. Because through my testimony, it will be your deliverance. I'm desperate for God. I'm going through a divorce. My husband lives 10,000 miles away from me. And I have to do this. We're not supposed to do things. We're not supposed to really divorce, no. But Moses made the law, asked God, and he gave him the law. When a man cheats, commits adultery, this can happen. I just want you guys to be transparent in your lives. Stop lying to yourselves. Stop being oblivious. Stop being bluffing. Stop being a bluffer. Stop acting like it's not, it's not bad. When it's bad. I can say that because you see me drunk. I have on this, but under here, I'm hurting. And you are going through the same. That's why you're here today to hear this message. Now, I'm not, I, I don't have time to read because I know a lot of people you are using credit. And when you guys get time, go on YouTube and add and subscribe to my channel, which is Godly Global Ministries. Subscribe to my channel because we're going to be doing, I will be partnership I will be partnershipping with Pastor Kanani and we're going to be doing some things in the continent. I will be traveling over. I will be coming to South Africa um, probably the beginning of next year. I am out of work at the moment. I told you guys this the last time. I am out of work at the moment. So when we do partnership, there will be be some things that we will be doing to help better villages and communities to help send some children to school help out with school fees just to take the load through God all the cares that you cast on him through us he will help some families amen When you get time tonight, I want you to read Psalm 69, the whole chapter, not just one verse, read the whole chapter. We're going to read 16 right now, but read Psalm 69, whole chapter. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies and do not hide your face from your servant for i am in trouble hear me speedily draw near to my soul and redeem it deliver me because of my enemies glory be to god hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will take your pain and he will take everything that you are, you're loving. You love going 
down to the bar. You love hanging out with your girlfriends. You love putting on your little, your little dresses and your tight clothes. Showing your body. Giving your body to people that don't respect it. Giving your body to men and men giving their bodies to women. You need to repent and turn from your wicked ways. Be obedient to God. I'm going to give it to you honestly and undiluted because I come under the teachings of Pastor Kanani. I'm not going to give it to you easy. I'm not going to keep praying and 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 and, and deliver in deliverance and asking God to lay His hands on you and you're still out here repent. Re trying to repent and repent for the same thing, the same sin every week. You shacking up with a man that you're not married with, your blessings are being taken away. That man needs to marry you. God will send a wrath on you. You'll be arguing. He'll be out there cheating. You'll have an attitude. He'll have an attitude. You'll start fighting. These are the things that God puts in up, puts the, the wrath he puts on us when he wants you to do his will and not your own. I was so in love with my husband, putting him on a pedestal that's idolizing. So he laughed against me. It made me desperate for him. Long, when you're desperate for God, you're long, you're long, longing, longing for the presence and power of the living God, having a deep desire, a passion, yearning that can only be satisfied by the presence of our holy God. Let us pray. And if there's anybody that wants prayer, come on. This is the time. I'm going to pray for everyone. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to God's word today. Do not forget, we read from Joel 1.14. Psalm 69. I want you to read the whole chapter of Psalm 69. The whole chapter. Don't miss a step. Don't miss a beat. Read the whole chapter. And we also read from Matthew 5, 6. I want you to put in the chat I am desperate for God because after this word, you should be seeking God. You should be repenting. You should be believing in the word of God. You should be accepting Jesus Christ's sacrifice as your personal savior. You should be obeying God's laws, not being self-righteous, but obeying God. God's laws through Jesus Christ because we can only get our righteousness from Jesus because he's the only one that's perfect. Matthew 5, 6, put in the chat, Luke, oh no, Luke was, yeah, you know what? I wanted to read from Luke 13. When you guys get a chance, read from Luke, thir Luke 11, 13. I'm going to read it. If you then, being evil, 
know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him 11 13 if you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him I'm praying for you all to be desperate for God. I'm praying that it'll be a new in you to be desperate for God. I'm praying that this platform is going to change your life. You're going to come back a new creature. You're going to tell us on this platform that you came back with a new job, that you came back married, that you had a child that you've been trying to have, that you had the finances that you needed, that you started a business online, that you've been on different platforms trying to start a new platform for yourself. Because God has opened his spiritual eyes to what your gifts are and what you should be doing in the kingdom of God. This is a new. I'm praying, I decree and declare over your lives that God opens your spiritual, spiritual eyes. I decree and declare over your lives that you will be changed. I decree and declare over your lives that blessings are coming. I decree and declare over your lives that testimonies are coming. I decree and declare over your lives that you will be great. I decree and declare in your life that you will repent and turn from your wicked ways. I decree and declare over your life that this message will change your life. I decree and declare over your life that you will receive love, abundance, joy, happiness, patience in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, glory to God. I am praying that a new is coming to you, that you will be desperate for our King because he's waiting on you. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that power will touch you and deliver you from all your iniquities, from all the things that are not of God. And I cast that demon out of you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that that husband that is cheating, that is out there doing things that he know he shouldn't be doing. I cast him. I cast that evil, evil, lustful Jezebel spirit out of him. And I decree and declare that he will return home in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree and declare that someone is going to open their own business and is going to be very rich, very, very rich and will help serve the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. I decree and declare over your lives that you your spiritual eyes are going to open and you will see the destination that you have to accomplish to get to your open door. I decree and declare open doors. I decree and declare greatness and love and power. I decree and declare move mountains. I decree Pray and declare that you will know how to get around the serpents and the snakes in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm praying for you 
Janet, I'm praying for you. Peter, I'm praying for you. T. Seto, Seso, I'm praying for you. Gif, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. Precious, Alexia, Kimberly, I'm praying for you. Hector, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, Mavis. I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you, Fiesel. I'm praying for you. Delini, I'm praying for you. I'm praying over your lives that God deliver you from all that he does not approve of. I decree and declare over all of you lives that you are going into the next dimension of your life, that you're going to a higher dimension, that no more stagnation will be in your life, that no more evildoers will be around you. They will be casted out in the mighty name of Jesus. That no more serpents and snakes will come into your dreams and steal your dreams and steal what God has for you in Jesus' mighty name. I lay my hands on all of you in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will be desperate for God. I decree and declare God is sending you back to tell a testimony. Somebody is coming back next week with a testimony. In Jesus' mighty name. That woman that thought that God couldn't give them a baby. God said, be desperate for him and he shall fill your womb. That woman that's looking for that job. And that man that's looking for that job, God said, get desperate for him and he will give it to you. That person that's under a generational curse, God said, get into your prayer closet and be desperate for him. Change the dynamic of the family, change the thoughts, the way that you think. Ask God to cleanse and wash and renew your mind every day because that's the first thing that the devil goes to is your mind. And I decree and declare that God has freed your mind from the devil. That you may think with the positive mind. I decree and declare over your homes that God will deliver all the demons out of that house from wall to wall and corner to corner. Every witch, every warlock that tried to bring you down in a curse, it is sent back to them three times fold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that has been disobedient to God's word, I pray that, that you become obedient in Jesus' mighty name. I pray over your mothers and your fathers. I pray for your families. I pray that they get closer to God. I pray that all the ones that are in polygamy and that are doing rituals, that they Stop it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you do unto others as they do unto you. Hallelujah. I pray that your heart gets right with God. I pray that your children be lifted up and be heirs and queens to the throne of God. I I pray that your children will rule nations. I pray that your children will go to college. I pray that you get the resources you need to pay for food and bills and in school for your children. I pray that the sick and shut in will be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that anyone that is sick or battling pain on this live, that they are held in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
I pray that you be lifted up by the word of our God, our Abba, our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that you pray in the spirit and the authority of Jesus Christ. I pray that you stop scheming. I pray that you stop plotting. I pray that you stop monitoring. I pray that you stop doing the things of the world. Don't be self-righteous, but be righteous in the God that we serve. Come to him. Come to him. Come to God. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. Everybody on the chat will all say it together. Five times, Holy Spirit, come into my heart. 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 Hallelujah. Do you feel that peace? Do you feel the joy? Do you feel the peace? Holy Spirit, come into this life. Holy Spirit, come into their hearts. Do you feel a peace? Do you feel peaceful? I feel his presence. I feel God's presence. I feel, I feel. Hallelujah. Be desperate for God. Thank God. Worship God. Turn from your wicked ways. Abundance is coming. It's coming. It's coming for all of us. We can't praise God and he don't send blessings now. I want you tonight, whenever Pastor Kanani gives me the honor to bless his platform again, I want you guys to come on here. I want you to go home and pray tonight. If you're not home, go, go pray tonight. Pray, ask him for one thing. Before you ask him for the one thing, repent from something. Did you hear what I said? Before you ask him for the one thing, repent and have faith and believe in Jesus. And after you do that, I want you to ask God for one thing. One thing. Have faith that he's going to bless you with that one thing. I didn't say two. I didn't say three. One thing. Because I'm getting ready to show you the power of God. even if I'm not here. And don't forget, because I'm praying for you guys. Don't forget, every person that commented on this chat, I will be coming back on your message that you left. That you, If you said amen, I will be, be replying 
It was many of you that were here last time. I replied to you because I love you. I love you. I love you. Hector, I love you. Paulina, I love you. Janet, I love you. Gift Lizzie, I love you. Mafifi, I love you. Precious, Ayanda, Nawi, Nawambi, 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 Jerome, I love you. I want you to go. Trust me. Trust me. If you're being obedient, be obedient. Be obedient to this. I'm telling you. Watch how God work. Trust me. Trust me. I'm not just saying it. I'm not bluffing. I pray every day, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times a day. My my nine-year-old can get on here and preach. Trust me. That's how much I pray. And I, I'm in my word. Trust me. He can get on here and preach a word. Libongang, I love you. Farista, I love you. I love you guys. Remember. Repent. I'm telling you this because I want you, I want to hear. I just told my sister, I prophesied on my sister, and I'm still, you know, asking Pastor Kanani, can I come on a platform and prophesy for you guys? Because he's not too big on prophecy because there's so many false prophets, but he knows because I prophesied for him. And a lot of things that I prophesied for him. They came to pass. They came to pass. I told him he was going to get his church. I said, God said, you're going, you're going to get this church. I was like, I don't know how, but you're going to get it. And what happened? Somebody donated and he got the church. He's building it now. He still need donations but he's building it now. I told my sister, my nephew dropped out of high school and I told my sister last week, I said, he's gonna graduate. She was like, I don't know how he gonna graduate. He don't even go to school. I said, God said he's gonna graduate. My nephew graduated last Saturday. I was on TikTok Live last night with one of my friends Pastor Asaba, and the woman was on there crying because her husband, no, her significant other, they have a child together. And I, and she kept saying, no, a woman's going to take him away from me. I said, do he drink? I see him in a bar with his friends. Is he drinking? And she said, yes, he does drink. I said, that's where he is. After I said that, Pastor Asaba prayed with her again after I prophesied and prayed with her. And then she just started really letting everything out. She said, our problem is he drinks so much that he comes home and he argues. And I said, God is good. I told my sister, my nephew is going to open his own business and he's going to be really big. So this is the next prophecy that's going to be, that has to come to pass. It hasn't come yet, but it's coming. It's coming. 
I told Pastor Kanani another prophecy. And he just showed me papers the other day. So I'm telling you guys tonight, seek first ye the kingdom and his righteousness. And, uh, and all the things will be given to you. But in this case, God wants you to repent. Ask God for one thing, all of you. Everybody, I'm not just picking one, Ayanda, Janet, everybody, everybody on this platform, repent. And I mean repent because if God, God knows who we are, are already. I don't know sometimes if we know who we are, but he knows who we are. So if you know that you are drinking Coronas every day and you hanging out with John John and uh, Ebenezer and Lucifer, you hanging out with all of them and you go repent and say, God, I'm not drinking no more. And God knows when you get the blessing, you gonna, you're going to go get another Corona. You're not going to get the blessing. You have to you have to be truthful he knows he trusts he knows the ones he can trust he knows your heart so don't try to scam god you can't scam god that you can't do but you can be honest and you can be trustworthy and you can do this you have to give God something to get something. Okay? I love you, Stephen. I love you, Mavis. Masasi. So, I want you to come back here. Don't forget, because I'm going to remember, I write names down. I still have my card that I wrote prayers for names for prayers. I still have that card. So all I have to do is just go back to this platform, and I'm going to see everybody on here. Trust my prophecy. Trust it. Believe it. But believe in God. Believe in him. Believe in him. Don't believe in me. I said trust the prophecy. Not me. That's God's word. And you said you wanted a new business. And you said you wanted some money. And you said you wanted them new pair of Louis Vuitton shoes. Even though that's of the world. I don't agree. But I said one thing, if, if it's according to his will, okay? I pray that you are blessed. I pray that you go out with a new mindset and that you tell someone else this word. Be desperate for God and not for man. Stop going to these places, these churches, and asking people to lay their hands on you, and you're passing out like you're having a seizure. When it's just demonized. Ask God to deliver. Matter of fact, God, I pray for everyone that went to a demonized church and did not know. I pray that they are delivered right now by the blood of Jesus Christ. And another thing, when you get a chance, watch Pastor James Koala. You have to watch this. This man was a demon. He had powers of the dark side. He's a pastor now, preaching God's word. And listen to how he got delivered. 
and watch what he say about half of these pastors in these churches. Trust me. Test the spirit. Watch. Ask God to, to open your spiritual eyes. And then you can see. God will reveal them to you who was fake and who was real. And I can tell you, I searched for your pastor. I searched for him. You hear me? Because my spirit, this man, I watched his testimony and I learned a lot from. Yes, Paulina. Yes. Wasn't it? Wasn't it awesome? Wasn't that testimony awesome? Wow. It was so awesome. It was so life changing. I told Pastor Kanani about it. He 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 went he said I know him. I was like, "Wow." But when I looked for I Pastor Kanani did a um interview with the two twin sisters. I had their names written down. They're really big on YouTube. They have a very big platform. And they did an interview. Paulina, did you watch Pastor Kanani's uh, interview as well? That was an awesome interview. He gave his testimony. He was honest. He was transparent. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the authority of Jesus Christ, I pray for, for Mary's son. I rebuke the spirit of mental illness in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I cast it out of her son right now in the mighty name of Jesus by Holy Ghost fire, 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 fire in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It is well. It is well. It is well. I went to his conference. How was his conference? Oh, Alexia, you seen it too? It was awesome. It was thrilling. It was chilling. At first, I was like, "Woo!" I could feel that this is. He really went through that. That was the, I, that was true. Paulina. You have to go on YouTube and watch Pastor Kanani Stevens, uh, his interview with the twin sisters. They're from, I believe they're from South Africa. I'm not sure. I've got to remember their names. I'm going to remember their names next time because I want you guys to check out that. That is what drew me to him. And I'm like, I need to find this man. I need to find this man. I'm on, I'm calling people. Uh, I'm on TikTok. I'm looking for him on every social media platform. And I'm like, sir, I'm looking for you. I'm from the United States of America. Can you please get back in contact with me? It's a must I talk to you, you know? And we prayed, you know, over my situation. And he prayed, we did midnight prayers. I fasted, he fasted. I prayed, he prayed. He prayed over me, I prayed over myself. He, oh my God, we went in for days and days and days. That is truly a real soldier in Christ. And you have to thank God. The Sint Twins, put it in the chat. Yay, the Sint Twins, yes. From South Africa, hallelujah, bless them. Please watch Pastor Kanani with the Sint Twins. That was an awesome 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 interview that was awesome that changed my life and i found him 
and I ain't leave him ever since. I have not left him ever since. He is my pastor as well as your pastor, and I thank God for him because he, he gives you the, he doesn't sell you a dream. He doesn't sell you a scheme. He doesn't sell you hope. He's like, if you don't do these things, this is what's going to happen, darkness and attacks. And that's how I preach. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to destroy you and build you back up. That's it. I want to destroy you, tear you down, tear that old person apart. Hallelujah. With the authority of Jesus Christ. You just, Paulina, did you just do it? Or you been, you've been, praise God. You see, I have to tell Pastor Kanani all the love he gets. You have to put you, how much you love your pastor. You have to tell him how much you love him because he needs to hear that as well. I was so encouraged and it was my first time seeing the twins. Aren't and they so beautiful? Oh, I love them. And they're so like, they just like a breath of fresh air. Like, you know, their personality, they're just so fresh and loving and kind. I can just see God in them. They're so geeky and just so cute. I love them. Yes, I do have my own YouTube channel. It is Godly Global Ministries. I will put it and the on the top of this video. Yes. The Holy Spirit is a man. I'm telling you, I was going through darkness. I was with a man that I barely knew. I was married to a man that I barely knew. And it's so funny because I ran into this lady at the department store and I was telling her, yeah, I got married. Da, 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 da. And she said, did you, did you buy my book? And I said, no. What's your book? She said, um, my book is called I Married a man I barely knew so she said it's on Amazon you can buy it I went and bought that book it was so good it changed my life it was about a woman that married a man in the church and in the church they were just he was uh, I think he was like involved in the church she would come to the church and um, I believe that the pastor didn't want to marry them. They went for counseling. He said, it's something I'm not liking about this guy, but she goes and marry him anyway. He has his own place and, you know, he asked her to move out of her place and move into his place. And let me tell you, he became a monster. He started uh, abusing her. He was a narcissist. He was just verbally abusing her, telling her she couldn't do this, she couldn't be this, she couldn't do that. Um, her grandkids couldn't come over his house. And I was just like, wow. My situation is totally different, but it was an eye opener. So if you want that, that book, I forgot her name, but you could just put in the man I, I married, I barely knew. And that was me. And my pastor's wife prophesied on me like maybe two years ago. And she said, you have a monster on your head. And I was like, a monster on my head? How, how can we interpret that dream? But then I wasn't that good with my prophecy. I, I got better with my, I knew God gave me the gift because I could see and I seen even even on my job, people always told me I had that gift. They were like, you always see things before it happens. And then I was just like, I didn't tap into it yet. So when I tapped into it and I could see, that's when it got, you know, a little more clear. And then I was like, well, what do you mean he got a big, it's a big fur. She said, it's a big furry monster on your head. So when I told her I was going to divorce my husband, she said, 
that's the big furry monster I was talking about a couple years ago. You remember that? I was like, oh my God, why you just didn't tell me? Why you couldn't just tell me it was a big furry monster on my head? Why did you have to let me go through all of this darkness, all this pain and destruction? She said, because sometimes God allows a prophet not to tell you something so he can get the glory. And so you can learn because sometimes when a person is, it, you tell someone a prophecy too fast, like today with my sister, I was like, you sure your pastor is, you know, a, a good pastor? And she was like, oh, yes, he was. She got defensive. So that's why you have to be careful with prophecy because people can be defensive. You know, you can tell them, I see you, you know, be, being a fornicator. I see you going out with this man. I see you going out with that man. And if the person isn't spiritually mature, they can't handle that. They can't handle that. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, I pray for your daughter, Gift gift Lizzie. I pray that, that you take the burdens off of her shoulders, Lord. I pray that you help her with finances. I pray that you give her a vacation. I pray that you deliver her from all the responsibility that's on her. I pray that you cover her by the blood of Jesus. I pray that the people that are using her stop today, right now, from asking her and burdening her with their problems. She's your daughter, God. She worships you. She loves you. Just please, my Lord, in the authority of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare over her life that she's going to get everything that she asked you for going to happen. She's a sweet spirit. She doesn't really complain. She just does it. And I just ask you, my Lord, to get the beggars away. To take the beggars away from her. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Gift Lizzie. Gift Lizzie. Gift Lizzie. Gift Lizzie, you are <laughs> such a good person. You give a lot. You give a lot. Such a good spirit and you do not complain. God is removing those burdens from you. He's removing those burdens from you.
Janet, I'm going to pray for you. Gifty, gift Lizzie, am I right about the burdens on your shoulder? Am I right about the beggars and the people that are surrounding you and they just keep taking and taking and taking from you? You don't like to talk about it. You don't like because you are not a complainer. And that is why God is going to bless you, my, my love, my dear. You are going to get what your heart desires. Thank you, Jerome. I will get with you in a few. Let's go to Janet. Gift Liz, Gift Lizzie, I asked you a question. Can you respond, please? Where's Janet? I seen her. Okay. Are you battling with um, a spiritual husband, Janet? I haven't heard from Gift Lizzie yet. I knew it, see? She doesn't like, like to complain. Look at that, all is well. God loves you. All is well. Didn't I tell you? She's a sweet spirit. Good evening, Fabo. Welcome. I'm going to get off of this platform soon. Pastor Kanani Ben got off the platform. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Jen. You never got rid of the soul ties, the men that you slept with in the past. You never got rid of your soul ties. You never, all the men that you slept with, and you slept with more than one man. You're not a, you're not a, uh, you're not celibate. You're not, um, you're not a virgin. So it, one of them that you slept with, he want to keep sleeping with you, but you don't want that anymore. You're ready for marriage. And he has you under spiritual attack with a spiritual husband at night. So you have to think about all the men that you slept with, write their names down, and you need to disconnect yourself from them. You need to be delivered from them. You need to ask God to break those soul ties in the mighty name of Jesus. I will pray for the, the spiritual husband. But before we even do that, you need to break away from the soul ties. It's like a two-part deal to it. It doesn't just work like that. You can be delivered, but until you find him, who he is, and the only way you can find out who, who he is, he's tying himself to you because he enjoys your sex. And that's going to block you from your real husband. This is undiluted gospel, guys. I didn't come here to be your friend. I came here to destroy you so you can be rebuilt. Get in your room. Find out who it was that you laid down with and break those chains. And when you're finished, 
come back if it's not today right under this video because i go back on the videos and i answer questions and i pray for people so you need to do that if you don't want to hear something real about yourself and you don't want to hear truth then you need to not ask me to pray for you you need to not ask me to you know because i'm going to prophesy first and i need you to go break those soul ties and if you're asking that person for money and don't eat food from him he's gonna keep putting that spirit in your food and on the money and you're going to keep the soul you're going to keep that demon on you at night i had to do it with my mess up last year i had to break it i had to break it i had to put his name write it and i said god break this bond because i was i you know sometimes you're in a car or you're walking and their names pop up in your head. And why is that? It's because it's a spiritual attack. You have to think about who it was, break it. And then if you break it before we get off this platform, then I can pray for you. Because if you don't break it with him, it's still gonna happen. Because he's the connection. I don't know who he is. You have to find it out. There you go. You, you are a mother of two and you are divorced. You need to break away from the husband. You need to break away. It is the children, your kid's father. I know you're ready to get married. I'm ready to get married. We can get married together. I mean, not us getting married, but we can have our weddings together. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. The devil always tries it, right? In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray for Alexis that she will get the employment that she's looking for. And even if it's not employment that she's looking for, If even if it's not the employment that she's looking for, my God, my King, my Abba, I pray that she gets a job, any job, not any job, a job from you, God, because we know that's going to be the best job. Cover her job, my Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and Savior, my God, you are worthy. Father, your daughter, Fazizel, Fazizel, I pray that I'm saying it right, my Father, but you know who I am talking about. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. that she is anointed with oil and that she gets the fullness of you. Come 
cover her. Wash her. Renew her garment in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, go into her heart. Holy Spirit, go into her heart. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for Halami for breakthrough, my Lord. You know what your son or daughter is going through, my Father. And I pray that you. Bind any evil, rebuke any devils that wants to attack their breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for your daughter, Ayanda. I pray that she overcomes her fears. I pray that that demonic evil attack is casted out right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And that she is freed from that, that chain and that bondage in Jesus this mighty name we pray amen 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 glory be to god hallelujah Amen, 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 amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for healing for Farisa from diabetes. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, just touch her body. Touch her pancreas so that her pancreas can be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed, my daughter, in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for Jerome for breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name that he gets the breakthrough from the trials and tribulations that he has been encountering. Jerome, you have to get out of the world, my love. Stop doing worldly things. This is why this attack came on. I don't know what you've done. I cannot see that. But what I can hear from God is that you need to do some repentance. And when you repent, your breakthrough will come. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Kimberly, keep a book and a pen next to you. And when you wake up, write it down. Write it down in the mighty name of Jesus.
Give me one second, guys. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I pray for Freddie. In Jesus' mighty name. For setback. For breakthrough. Jesus mighty name. Freddie, you know why you're having those setbacks. Because you're spending unnecessary money on things that you don't need. And you, you have a, a lifestyle that's not pleasing to God. You know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know you. But you need to stop it. You need to repent. You need to repent. You need to repent. You know what you need to do. Repent. Repent. And turn from your wicked ways. When you repent and you return from your wicked ways, you will. I want to pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for you. You got to stop doing, overdoing, trying to give too much, to giving too much of yourself, idolizing. That's not of God. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus for Freddie, my Lord, my King, my Abba, El Denai, Elohim, I am that I am. Yeshua, Yahweh. Oh, hallelujah. That your son, Freddie, is blessed with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and focus in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pray for you, Fabo. Hold on. This one. Did I finish it? Oh, God. I wrote this down. My lighting is messed up. So I'm gonna have to try to fix this. Let's see. 
let's see here. I wrote this down for Miles Monroe. So I want you guys to see this. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm just going to switch up the lighting and also the, um, this is like really light. Oh, okay. I know they have all these little icons. I'm so sorry. I'm just gonna try to okay let me just turn the lighting off on my camera okay. all right so what was this message from miles monroe this makes me woo, very dark this is very dark so let me get my son to turn the light on for us. Okay. So, um, London, yeah. can you turn this light on for me? Lenny? I have been on here for almost three hours, but that's my love for you guys. Let's see if we can do this one. Jesus. Okay. We'll stay here. That's fine. We will stay here. Let's see here. You guys keep putting your prayers up. I'm still here. I will be leaving in about 10 minutes. So you have 10 minutes to put your prayers up. 10 minutes. Ten minutes. So put your uh, prayers up while I mess around with this thing here. I don't know what's going on. Okay. So just pick. Now, Miles Monroe wrote, don't, don't seek success, seek to be valuable. To become valuable is to be focused, is to master something. This is for Freddie. Freddie, this is for you. God told me I, I had my son. That's, what, that's why we got the whole screen, everything messed up on the camera, because I went to get my son to go get this for you. This is for you, Freddie. And I want you to go on YouTube and look up Miles Monroe because Miles Monroe was a man of God. He didn't, you know, he wasn't a man that stole from the church. You hear what I'm saying? In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for Tisseto, Tisseso, to be delivered, to be destroyed and built up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to become a 
a new creature in Christ. I pray in the mighty name for Gesetha, Gesetha, for a financial breakthrough, Lord. But with the financial breakthrough, Father, when you bring her the blessing, let her have the wisdom to go with the blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray for Wendy to have a permanent job, a job that will coincide with her purpose for you, my God. I pray that Wendy will be blessed with the permanent job. I decree and declare the job is already there in Jesus' name. Okay, I have my book here. I'm going to write some names down so I can pray for you behind the scenes because it's, it's a couple people like um freddie you going on my list trust me and remember what our title was for today be desperate for god all of these things will be added unto you repent Believe, read your Bible. Simple, simple, and you will have your blessings. But when we're not obedient, God takes money from us. Things start happening in our houses. Things start happening. I do understand you. Who was that? Amen, Freddie. Yay. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Cover your son, my, my king, my father, my Abba. Please cover your son and build him up because he, he, has, he has good, strong work ethic skills. He has strategy. He knows how to get to, to money. But it goes out the window. So God, I ask that that curse of letting it go out the window like an eagle be canceled in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to check up on you. And it was one, one more I want to check up. This is who God is leading on my spirit to pray, to really, really pray for behind the scenes. I have haven't been led to hold on Janet Janet God bless you, Janet. Yes, you've been celibate, but whoever you was sleeping with before you went celibate, I'm saying you're not a virgin. I'm saying you had, you know, you had previous partners before this. I don't know you. This is God's prophecy, not mine. You're celibate now, but you wasn't celibate previous. And whoever you slept with miss your sex and that is why you are connected to that spirit at night i'm gonna send you this little cartoon and you're going to understand it even better because i don't like to talk too much on here about people's personal but prophecy is what helps people to grow in the word of god 
because you know where your mistakes are. You know what you need to fix. But um, Farista, I pray for you, sweetie. God is doing it already. The only two people that God wants me to continue, everybody I pray for. Amen, Gasita. Amen, glory to God. I'm so happy for you guys. I am truly happy for you. I am your sister in Christ. I am your sister from the United States of America, but I'm your sister in Christ. Hallelujah. And if you ever come to the, to the States, look me up. And if you're trying to get to the States, you know what you got to do. You need to do some repenting. You got to do some repenting. We all got to do some repenting. Freddie and Janet were the two that God told me to pray, pray for. Fizal, you're good. You're good. Your blessing is coming. Gift Lizzie, you know, you know, I love you. So sweet. I want you guys to know I'm on a 24 hour fast. So I haven't eaten all day. So I'm kind of uh, weak. I did three 24 hour fasts. This is my third day. A water fast. I've been on, a, I've been on live with you for three hours. I will be coming back on this live that we're doing now. I will be coming back on here and I will be asking your, I will be answering your questions and I will be praying for you. I will be praying for you. Amen. Paulina, you can um, inbox me on Facebook. Selena Jackson. You can add me. I will add you. And yes, yes, we can talk. Yes, no problem. Okay, guys, let's take this thing in prayer. But before, let me read this to Freddie. Listen, Freddie, open your ears. Don't seek success. No, with a C. C E L I N A. C E L I N A. I want you to write it so I can see it. Freddie, you there? Amen. Thank you, Freddie. You ready, Freddie? Don't seek success. Seek to be valuable. To become valuable is to focus. It is to master something. Whatever you are gifted in is the key to your progress, process, and prosperity. This is what keeps you alive, is staying in your mastery. Amen. Do I need to read it again, Freddie? Uh, it's C E L I N A. You spelled my last name correctly. You 
heard me, Freddie? Don't seek it. Seek it to be valuable. To become valuable is to focus, is to master something, master something, your gift from God. Master it, master it, master it. Don't be too fast. And I got that in my prophecy when I was something fast. I just see you like this. Slow down. Because you're going to miss the moment. See, the blessing isn't the gift. I mean, the bless isn't the blessing. The blessing is the journey that it took you to get there. That's the blessing. Don't seek success. Seek to be valuable. To become valuable is to focus, is to master something. Whatever you are gifted in is the key to your progress, your process, and your prosperity. This is what keeps you alive, is staying in your mastery. When you get up, you, you, you're happy because you're doing something that is for the kingdom, that fulfills you, that is your purpose, that is your light, that will bring abundance more than what you expected. Yes, Paulina, you got it right. You got it right. The last one. Amen. Glory be to God. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Abba, my Lord, my King, my Abba, you are worthy to be praised. Worthy to be praised. You are holy, my King. You are holy, my king. You are holy. We are grateful, my king. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My father, my Lord, we repent. I repent for my sins, my Lord. I repent for gossiping. I repent for, for um, just having bad thoughts. And I turn away from that, my God, with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Father, I pray over your children on this platform that they turn and pray and repent from their sick, from their, from their sinful ways. I decree and declare over everybody's life on this platform that they will be successful because I believe that they will do as you say, my King, my Lord, my Abba, Elohim, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yeshua, my God, that I am that I am. Holy Spirit, touch you, everybody, Flow through them, flow through them, Holy Spirit. Flow through them, my Lord, my King. Give them the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding. Give them the jobs, the healing, the love, and the peace. Give them, my God, they are desperate for you, my Lord. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Yeshua, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Elohim, El Deny, that I am, I am, I am, that I am, my Lord. Hallelujah. Touch their spirit. Touch them where it hurts, my God. Fix it, my Lord. Cleanse them, my God. Wash them, my Lord. Change them, my God. Give them a new, my God. Bless them with new journeys. Bless them with new visions. 
Bless them with new businesses. Bless them with new abundance. Bless them with a new mindset. Bless them with a new soul. Bless them with a new body. Please, my God, we put fire around them in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch Pastor Kanani. Build him up. Touch Pastor Kanani. Use him, my God. Protect him, my God. Deliver him, my God. Heal him, my God. Raise him up, my God. Edify him, my God. Magnify him, my God. Let him be planted, my Lord. Let him be the seed, my God. Let him grow, my God. Let him be beneficial, my God. Let him be abundant, my God. Let him be massive, my God. God. Let them seek you and continue to seek you and let them keep striving and keep pushing and keep kicking and keep raising up to you, my God. Let them keep flying and let them keep seeing through his spiritual eyes for his people. I ask that this platform grows and grow massively in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I thank you for coming today. I pray that you are desperate for God. I pray that you are blessed and highly favored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Remember, repent and ask God for one thing and he will give it unto you. I love you, but God loves you best. Shalom, shalom.